Hello, and welcome to the View from Flyboss 2020. The conference is being held virtually this year for the first time ever. I'm Joy McKnight, Managing Editor of The Banker, and I'm joined via video link by Paula De Silva, who's Head of Transaction Services at SEB. Paula, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, Joy, for having me. Very nice. And um, digital, also the interview. Isn't that interesting? It makes a big difference from our previous uh, video interviews. So my first question is really around how the COVID pandemic has impacted your clients in the Nordic region. So depending on the industry, actually, not all clients have been affected the same way. Uh, some have uh, prospered, really. And I guess that's a global phenomena. Uh, and some, of course, have been uh, severely hit. Uh, depending on if you're an exporting uh, uh, company or if you um, are in the health industry, for instance, uh, or yeah, all the um, the um, surroundings of that uh, company. But um, as you know, Sweden has uh, followed a different path from uh, the rest of the world, and we are yet to see the the full outcome of this: um, who is right and who is wrong, and everyone is affected, of course, in, in the end. But uh, there has been a quite uh, steep decline and also quite steep um, um, bounce back from most industries. And as I said, when we look at our client base, uh, depending on, on when you are or what kind of industry you are, you are uh, very differently uh, affected. So we are still um, being able to help our customers through this. How is SEB really responding to uh, its corporate clients' needs at this time? So we have uh, developed quite uh, good processes in this and showed uh, that we are really close to those customers. And we have processed, for instance, lending proposals uh, in a really, really high pace and also any kind of, uh, of uh, uh, immediate aid uh, we have been able to, to deliver on. And uh, there has been a lot of uh, state or government uh, funding, which we have been able to channel to customers uh, really quickly as well, with the help of uh, export crate agents or uh, similar uh, vehicles. So um, our processes have been uh, put at the stress, but uh, fortunately we have come out in a, in a really good way. The main theme of Cyboss this year is driving the evolution in smart finance. You know, what does that mean to you? Smart finance, I think, is important for banking to look into instead of really uh, going into the silos of product, uh, rather to go across, get your funding in, a, in the best way possible, and also to find ways of, especially for transaction services, to be in the working capital space very quickly to adhere to whatever the needs are. Is it an LC? Is it a uh, open account financing? Is it a discount of a, of a draft? So that we are not, uh, you know, fixed in in the ways that we have worked before. Um, so that's one part of of uh, that. I'm sure it can be a hundred things uh, as well. But smart financing uh, in my world is to stay really, really close to the customer needs and adapt to those really fast. Excellent. So the big move to real time. Exactly. And also, I think that uh, we have looked at uh, to, to finance things in, in uh, different ways as well. Uh, SEB has been part of starting up a fund, for instance, for financing customers called Cinder uh, up here in, uh, in Sweden to look at midsize or smaller corporates and, and get them through this so that the owners can keep their company going also in really uh, bad times. And I think that's where you, you start your, your relationship for, for the long term again in, in the bad times. So it's really uh, good. And smart financing can also be, as you uh, were alluding to, in the digital space, how do you make decisions much, much faster based on prerequisites that you've set before, ratings that are done previously and so forth, and make really quick decisions for easier, easier access. So a lot of people are really talking about how we can come through the crisis brought on by the pandemic with a more sustainable world. How do you think we can do that? So it's all, again, about supporting our customers. What do they need from us? It's not about inventing products. Uh, and we, if we have talked, would have talked about this for 10, I don't know, 10 years ago, we would probably have talked about the green bond scenario where SCB did the first one 11 years ago, or almost 12 soon. Uh, but, but now it's about supporting the customers in their transition or the industries in their transition to green. Uh, and maybe not only green, but all the uh, 17 uh, global goals. Um, how do we support them in this uh, transition? And of course, if that is to choose, uh, you know, other suppliers or to finance their suppliers in a better way or to finance their customers in a better way, 
uh, to to go through um, um, not only a pandemic but in in the transformation of the business going forward. You you need to be really selective, right? How you choose your providers and and uh, also the ways you know transportation, uh, all kind of of uh, all kinds of transformation, waste management, water management, and so forth. And and then we need to understand those those value chains in a really good way. And that, uh, for me, is the most exciting part of everything, understanding how the customers are transforming for us to go along with them. That's the, the winning financial institution that will understand that uh, transition. We are extremely engaged in, in this. And also in the transaction services space, you know, be it the green supply chain, a green LC, a green guarantee. What is it that um, changes our balance sheet, but then also supplies uh, the right uh, help for our customers to transition. So it's really important that it's not from the inside out, but the opposite. Excellent. Thank you so much for your insights, Paula. Thank you, Joy. Nice uh, talking to you again.